Shalom, shalom, shalom. I do hope everyone is well and that you are walking in your shalom and that you are just, um, that you're good, that all is well with you and your family, regardless of what is going on around us. I do pray that you are at peace and that you are encouraged and that your needs are being met. And that you are continually trusting in the of your salvation and knowing that he will take care of you. Hallelujah. I am going to continue speaking from Titus 2, which speaks of how the older women are to teach the younger women. And today we're going to talk about adornment. Adornment. And so I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3. Likewise, ye women, be in subjection to your own men, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by conversation of the women, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair, and of wearing of gold, or of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the adornment of a meek and quiet ruah, which is in the sight of Yah of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women, also who trusted in Yah, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own men, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, calling him Master, as for that should be, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. And First Timothy chapter 2, In like manner, also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broaded hair, or gold, or apparel, pearls, or costly array, but which becomes women of professing reverence for Yah with good works. And so, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, well, I'm not knowing that the Most High, the Ruach Kadesh, would have me to deal with this, but it was on my mind how women adorn themselves, and so I went to Facebook and I wrote this. This is the cry of my heart. Women, adorn yourself in modest apparel. Your body is a valuable gift to your man, your husband. No other male should be able to get pleasure by seeing your body. Stay naked at home in your husband's house. And then he would stay home, perhaps. Wear little short dresses and skirts with no panty and bra at home. Then so many married men with Christian women wives will not complain about not having access to their woman's body. But when you come in public, wear all your clothes. No one should see your cleavage, your nipples, your upper thighs, the shape of your vagina in a pants or skirt. It is unclean and not the ruah of the Most High. No man wants to know that another man can see his woman's intimate parts, especially Women who are holding the Bible in their hands, claiming to teach, preach, and all your cleavage is showing out of order. The same Ruah Akadash Holy Spirit, who you say gave you the spiritual revelation, will also tell you your cleavage is exposed. Single women, are you trying to attract a man, a husband, or a John? A man who pays for sex. Whose daughter are you? Sarah or Delilah? Okay, that's what I wrote on Facebook. And it still applies the same today. Older women teach the younger women how to adorn themselves. And in order for us to teach younger women, we have to be that example. We have to be adorning, adorning ourselves appropriately. We have to be dressing as daughters of Sarah. Okay? And adornment, respectable, modest apparel being a respectable. It is not respectable for a mature woman to go out in public and you can see 
our body is just exposed all the intimate parts of us exposed when i was younger the older women used to say if you could show under your arm you could show your intimate part between your legs they used to tell us that you know especially the women in the church because you didn't go to church wearing harm out you know you you just didn't do it but today you can go to church, to the assembly looking any kind of way they have this thing which is not in the scripture come as you are you understand me and so people take that women take that to mean that you can wear anything when you go into the assembly saying that you are worshiping a righteous set apart lom and as we just read in first peter and first timothy that is not so and the question still remains whose daughter are you are you a daughter of sarah or a daughter of delilah or Jezebel means seducing. You trying to seduce a man? You going out dressing naked, exposing what are you you advertising? You're trying to attract a John to you because listen, mature women like myself know that a man is uh, any a man is not gonna be serious about a woman who dress inappropriately or who dress to expose her body. Mind you, you can get the attention, but that's all that can be just for the get you a quickie. Uh, a one night stand but men a real man is going to look for a woman who knows how to present herself when she go on in public she is dressed like a decent respectable woman no man wants to know that their woman is out in public and you can see all the crotch you can see all the breasts you can see all these other stuff all her um, all her body is exposed no man no respectable man wants that but a lot of men feel um depowered in their home they they emasculated they can't say nothing to these women today you understand me a lot of men can't speak to their wives about the way they dress themselves you know but we as daughters of sarah daughters of zion we are supposed to set the example on how we are supposed to dress the scripture said that we are to come out of the world come out of the world you understand me? What fellowship has light with darkness? The Father said that the Word said that we are set aside, pe a set, a set apart people, a peculiar people. So if you are set apart and peculiar when you go out, people should see that. You should not only look set apart when you go in, in, in church. And even then, like I said earlier, you don't even see the difference then. But when you out in public and if it's three women and you claim to be a daughter of Zion, and the other two women uh, who don't claim to be a daughter of Zion and someone approach, they should see that there's something different about you based on your appearance. All three of y'all should not look the same. And that is what we're having today when it comes to the church. Everybody look alike. I put that on Facebook a couple of weeks ago too. What is the difference between the world and the church? And I came back and I answered, nothing. There is no difference. Because when you look at women in the world and those women who are supposed to be in the church who call themselves godly women, the same. There is absolutely no difference. And as we can see from the scripture, there is supposed to be a difference. You understand me? If you are supposed to live at a certain standard, then you should want to dress that way. When I was growing up, they used to say, holiness the way you dress determined whether you were holy holy and then you had a lot of persons in the church who objected to that saying oh that don't mean you holy but like i just said if you are living at a certain standard in your life then you want to look the way that you want to look that part i often tell my daughter because it's something i used to say to myself dress the way you want to be your dress we are living in a society where people deal with you based on your presentation your appearance so we have to tell our young women, if you want to have a man to treat you with respect, present yourself respectable. You can't present yourself naked and want him treat you like a queen and a princess. You understand? You have to go out and present yourself looking very, very appropriate, modest, decent, covered up. There's nothing wrong with that. And it is very very I, I had an experience I'm thinking about a couple of years ago I went to a fish fry and there was a young woman sitting on a stool and you could see all her body she was sitting with her leg open and I went to her I thought she didn't realize she's a teenager so I went and I said your leg you, you know you're exposed mm -hmm. yes 
yes. I said, oh. So my friend with me knocked me and said she wants to be. Like, I said, what? And she kept her leg open because she was sitting there right then. I guess she was advertising. You understand? She was advertising. And so we got to really be an example to our daughters of Zion. When you are going out, you should look set apart. You should look like you represent the most high, the word. You know, years ago when I was married, I felt like the man in my marriage. And after I got a divorce, I really wanted to look and feel feminine. And so I, I decided, look, I want to wear more dresses and skirts. You understand me? I have nothing against wearing pants. But I want to look like I just wanted to gain my femininity back. And I found that since I started wearing more dresses and skirts, I get more attention from men. Respectable attention. If I'm walking into an establishment, I find that the man stand up and wait to open the door and they would say, Miss, you look very nice in that dress. I get that a lot. You understand me? And the compliments, you know? I guess there is nothing wrong with wearing your makeup and your um, nails and stuff. <clears throat> but we need to let our daughters of Zion know that that's not, and that's what the scripture is saying. It ain't saying that, oh, don't wear them. But you should not be known by that. You should not be known by a uh, thing that is what it's supposed to be about, that, that that's making you who you are. I think I spoke about that in the last teaching, you know. But you're supposed to be set apart. You're supposed to look different. You should look different from the young women who are in who are in the world. Because you have to be an example to them. Light supposed to shine in darkness. You can't shine in darkness if you dress in like the dark. Nobody could see you different. You're supposed to be different. You know, there years ago I had a track that said, You tell who you are by the company you keep. The clothes you eat, the clothes you wear, the food you eat, the places you go. You see? And so, the way you dress, and this is what we have to tell our young people, young women, the way you dress tells a lot about you. It says a lot about you. You know? And I often had, I had two, I had, remember two men asking me about my hair wrap. You know? And... They knew right away there was something different about me. Because one man looked at me and he said, um, I know you're natural. He said, but why are you wearing that? And I told him, well, I am an Israelite woman. He said, wow, you know who you are? I said, yes. I said, and the most High told me to wear my covering, my head, to remind me that I am under his authority. And he was like, wow. You understand? And another man he's married he said to me I went to the gas station he said to me do you always wear it I said yes I mean before I used to wear it only when I went and this is a part of my adornment this is something I always loved but I only wore it when I went into church and when I went out sometimes in public but I started wearing it every day like I said because the father told me to wear it to remind me that I am under his authority right and because years ago I was having dreams in 2011 that I was just naked sitting in church naked walking in public naked and he told me I was uncovered and to wear my covering my head you know and so I found that I've since I've been wearing my head covering every day listen to me I even have women when I walk certain places stand on the side and I've noticed that and they look at you like and that's what we're supposed to do we're supposed to stand out we're supposed to be we're supposed to look different you understand me when they see us our adornment and then when we open our mouth we're supposed to have um soft spoken um meekness gentleness soberness not acting like you're giddy like you drink giggly giggly you know sober sound and so we have to encourage our young women to dress the way they want to be addressed a man wants to know that he is with a woman a respectable woman you understand he wants to know that he's with a woman that he can take out and public and um, be very proud of and know that that's his prize that's his woman that's his gift 
You understand me? And so again, women, married women, when you home in your house, be naked. I was very serious when I wrote that because I've had men, I've heard men saying that. At least I've had other males. I, I, I get to communicate with a lot of men because of the job that I'm in. And so I hear them talking. And some of these men, they don't um, claim they can touch their wives. You understand me? So when you're home in your house and it's just you and your husband, or your children go to bed, be naked. That's the time for you to walk around naked and wear your little tight dresses. Some of the little dresses, they go out and show and everything. You know, when you're home, that's what you wear. When you go out in public, you want to dress like a married woman who is happily married and satisfied. Not like someone who's advertising like you looking to get some kind of attention from a strange man. Like you looking for a man to pull on you. You know, you want to look like I am happy with my husband. I respect my husband because that's what it says too. I respect my husband. I understand that the head covering in Israel, it was a part of our covering, but it also was what married women were war. You know, and I should have divorced. And I believe that's when I heard that uh, elder was speaking on it. How the women in the um, in Israel, and she was explaining the head covering. And I was like, oh, that's why the father told me to wear it. You know? But listen, we have got to get back to the scripture. Every, it is clear in the scripture how we are supposed to present ourselves as women. And as older women, we have to be an example and encourage the young women. And when they see us dressing that way, they too would want to do it. But we can say one thing and do another thing. And again, I'm talking to daughters of Sarah, not daughters of Zion. You understand me? The father's calling us back, back to that standard of holiness according to the scripture. And that's really what it comes down to. You know? And once again, I, let me just say I'm not advocating that you should wear all pants and st um all dresses. I have pants. I sometimes I prefer right now to wear dresses. So most days I even though I sometimes want to wear it, I say no. I in me it's just to wear because that's what I want. But you can wear um, a nice pantsuit, but you don't have to be tied up and screech, creak, crease up, we used to say. You know? And, and and being attractive does not mean that you have to be naked. You could be dressed very nice, fully covered, and still be attractive. And a man is going to appreciate that. A man is going to respect you more if you are dressing like a woman feminine a man want to know that he's what a woman a, a woman he want to be able to tell the difference and i think i honestly think and you know what really prompted me to to start wearing a lot of dress i was in cid one day last year dealing with the same guy i think and as i was sitting there see because i was praying for the father to dress me i was asking him to do some stuff in me you know and every female i guess officer that walk inside there I was like, ooh. And I said, that father's that how I look? They look masculine. And I said, that father, that's how I look in pants. I was like, chill, I don't want to look like that. I mean, masculine. They look, they look buff, 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 buff. And chill, that stuck with me. And I said, boy, I don't know if I look like that when I have more pants. But chill, I don't want to look like that. And that was one of the things that even encouraged me more to start wearing more dresses. And listen, I tell you, I have gotten much more of a respectable, um, pleasant response from men holding the door. I went to get my water the other day and the young man gone, come running. I said, oh, he said, I want to open the door for you. I said, oh, child, I ain't going to stop you. Open the door. <laughs> he said, no, 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 stop me. You know? And since I have been wearing my dresses and my, I, men treat me with respect. And I, I really, and that's why now, child, for me, I don't even want to put on no more pants because I, I want to look and feel like a woman. I represent the most high. I'm an Israelite woman. I am, I am, listen to me, I love my identity as an Israelite woman. I love looking and uh, set apart. I love looking different. Always wanted to be different. So now, this is me. You know, I don't feel like I'm missing nothing because I don't have all the makeup and the nails and all that stuff. You understand me? And once again, if that's you, that's fine. But it should not be to the level of the women in the world. You should be different. 
the Father is calling us to be different. Let us be different. Listen, we are in a crisis. You see what's going on in this country? We're in a crisis. You understand me? And we as women have to get back in position. We have to get back in position. The Father is calling us to get back into our position, into our role. Into our role. I want, let me see what that was. Face Peter. Right? We have to get back into our role. I want to read that before I go. Again, I can close with that. Likewise, ye women, be in subjection to your own men, that if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, won by the conversation of the women, just by your conversation. You know, some of you, and there's something different, but if you, your husband ain't, you claim ain't doing right, your conversation, your conduct should be able to win your husband over. While they behold your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, respect, reverence, who's adorning, you know what, how pleasing it, it would be to a man to know that his wife is going out every day looking respectable. And I think a lot of these things is why you have your women, your men, them staying out, you know, ain't coming home. Let it not be that outward adorning of planning the hand of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet ruler, which is in the sight of Yah of great price. That's what we have to be praying for. And that's what I'm praying for, a meek and quiet spirit. For after this manner, in the whole time, the holy women, see what they were called? Holy women also who trusted in Yah, adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own men. Even as Sarah obeyed Abram, calling him master, whose daughter are ye? As long as you do well. You are Sarah's daughter. As long as you do well. And not afraid with any amazement. Whose daughter are you? Are you a daughter of Sarah? Or a daughter, a daughter of Delilah and Jezebel? Seducing women. Women who are out trying to seduce a man with your body. And bringing, um, bringing disgrace and reproach upon your husband. Your conduct as a married woman, the way you speak, the way you conduct yourself, can win over your unsaved, unborn again husband. And we as women have to be older women examples to our young women. They're watching us. In the assemblies, they are watching us. Those older mother back in the day, listen to me, those older women used to look like Sarah, how oh, I believe Sarah looked very holy and sent apart and set apart. They had that about them. Those mothers with their head covered up and their, their dresses, and when they sit down, they put the thing over their knee. Not that they had to, because they wear dresses below the knee, you know, but just as a part of their adornment. And that's what we have to get back to. The world needs us. Women, listen to me. Daughters of Zion, the women out there need us to get back in our position because they need something to look forward to they need something to gravitate towards they need to see that difference and that's what the father is expecting us to do to be to be different to be set apart to represent him according to the word shalom shalom